Hey everybody, welcome to the 2020 Maryland Tech Invitational. I'm Mike Korch, I'm your Masters of Ceremonies for today's award show. As you can tell, things are a little bit different. We're not live in the Kaisakoff Center like we normally are after two full days of matches. Instead, we've had tons of volunteers and teams logging online to end up competing. We've had them going through Discord for all of their judging interviews and through the judging process. We've also had them checking out via Zoom calls and different camera setups with our virtual refs to go through an overall skills test. This has not been a small feat. There's been technical difficulties along the way, but all the teams have been more than gracious. Our volunteers have been amazing, and we're really, really excited that we could at least play robots virtually with everyone this year. Hopefully next year, we'll be back at the Applied Physics Lab here in Maryland, and we'll be able to compete live uh, instead of over the internet. So. Let's get started by taking a look at what teams that we have that are coming to compete this year for the Maryland Tech Invitational. This year we had 33 teams coming from four different countries and representing four states, 14 different states here in the US, uh, all competing completely and utterly virtually. Uh, as you can probably tell, this might have set up some time zone issues with being able to get teams to compete in our skills tests uh, or being able to get in time for their judging interviews. And speaking of the skills tests, many of these teams were extremely gracious because some folks might not have access to their schools or buildings to be able to compete and might be located with community centers. Uh, and we're taking into different safety precautions to be able to have other folks come into their spaces to be able to compete for the skills test. So overall, we're really, really excited about the turnout. Uh, we normally would have about 40 teams or so competing live, but being able to have about 33 teams virtually is a pretty, is a pretty good chunk. So we're really happy and thank you to all the teams who decided to compete this year. There are some other folks that we also have to thank uh, that helped to make this event happen. And that was gonna be our amazing sponsors. Uh, we have GoBuilda stepped up this year. Not only are they giving a $500 team credit for the Champions Award winner, uh, so for our skills test, but they're also giving away an FTC master kit that is gonna be paid for to a rookie team of their choice for our Team Choice Award winner. We'll get to choose that rookie team as well as giving out two stray for ch chassis kits uh, that are gonna go for the winners of our software innovation and our KISS awards. We also have the Triangle Foundation who through their gracious donation is being able to help us fund team grants so that it's able to keep winners of our awards and also winners of our skills test in the game and playing in the upcoming season. And then last, we, but definitely not least, we couldn't be here without the help of Rep Robotics as well, giving away an FTC starter kit for the Hardware Mastery Award winner, as well as a number of ultra planetary kits for the finalists for that award. So hopefully all these materials and credits will be able to help teams be able to put together machines to be able to compete in the future for next year, especially with a lot of the uncertainty that we know is going around the world right now. Also, there's a huge shout out that we wanna to give to Jenny Beatty, who is our volunteer coordinator for this event, um, who donated a lot of her time to be able to recruit one of the best volunteer classes we've had uh, going virtual was not an easy task for someone like Jenny to be able to continue to get all these volunteers on board. So thank you, thank you, thank you to Jenny. Uh, outside of that, we have our STEM Expo was still able to go on one of the cornerstones of the MTI, being able to showcase what was going on with the DART program, which Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab. The Applied Physics Lab has done the STEM Expo for the entire existence of the MTI, and it is one of the one of the cornerstones of the event that I personally really enjoy. And I know that a number of the kids and students and mentors also get a kick out of hearing about what great things that we're able to do in space in the upcoming future. Um, and then the last group of folks is some of the people that are doing a lot of the more behind the scenes work, uh, dealing with our spreadsheets, with paying folks, being able to make all that stuff work, accepting some of these sponsorships and donations. We have a lot of great work that is done by Rockwell Robotics Incorporated, who is the fiscal sponsor. Uh, for the Maryland Tech Invitational, and as well as the home of Tech Action, which is the foundation that was set up to help support the Maryland Tech Invitational from now and in through the future. So thank you to everyone who's involved with those organizations. We really could not have done it without you. But without them, there's also our amazing volunteers, as I alluded to earlier, that Jenny helped recruit. One of the beautiful things about us going virtual was we were able to go ahead and recruit volunteers from all across the world. We had them coming in from five separate countries, 13 states and the District of Columbia. 
We had over 60 volunteers, and all of this would not have been able to be done without the recruitment from folks like Jenny, but also from our awesome tech advisors that were in the background. Typically at an event, you'll have your FTAs are physically on the field. This year, we had to have them transition to help us set up an online field. So thank you so much to Matt Glennon and to Ryan Wolfram for running the behind the scenes for the Discord calls, the Zoom setups. All of this was all basically architectured and administrated by them. And we would not have been able to get through this without them. So thank you, thank you, thank you to both Matt and Ryan. Uh, I know that there's a bunch of things that a few of us on the planning committee had some questions about and they were able to iron it out and make it go relatively smoothly, all things considered. Uh, next, we have a, a group of people that is also just as helpful is our referees. Um, so one of the things that this comes to is like your refs, typically they're sitting near your fields watching the matches, but instead they poured a cup of coffee, logged into their computers, watching multiple views, coming in live, um, sitting there watching multiple skills challenge events from dozens of teams to be able to try to score and be able to give us and find ourselves a winner. So thank you to our refs and especially our head ref, Jeff Kelbick, who came up with a lot of the systems to be able to set up that all teams would be competing on the same basic playing field, even if they might not have had an actual playing field that they could use. So thank you, Jeff, and your team for all of their hard work. And then definitely last but not least, is our amazing judges. Uh, these folks tuned in from all across the world to be able to help us out. Uh, Dawei Lin and Phil Malone were our judge advisors for this event, coming up with ways to be able to go through a judging process when you're not in a physical room, when it's difficult to have physical deliberations, being able to physically see the team's robot, being able to ask that great feedback and those questions. Uh, they learned on the fly. A lot of uh, uh, boomers were learning from Zoomers, I believe is the terminology, about how things like Discord work, which is just amazing. You know, first people are, are some of the most uh, flexible in the world. And we're really, really thankful to all of them for putting their best foot forward and representing uh, Maryland Tech Invitational, but also the community that we're from as well as they did. Uh, so thank you very much to all of our judges. Now, this is the fourth year for the Maryland Tech Invitational, uh, probably not the fourth birthday that we all kind of had in mind for the event. However, we do have a little special something that we wanted to share for the folks that have been involved with us for a while. So I'd like to invite uh, Amber Dreisman, our founding director and member of our planning committee, to join me here in a moment. Hello. It's Hi. great to be here. Um, yes, this is a momentous uh, year for us, and and really, I did not think we'd be doing this virtually, but um, but that's all right. I really, um, when we were faced with the decision of whether we should go forward uh, virtually or or cancel it, um, we decided, what the heck, let's go for it. And um, I couldn't have done it without all those volunteers that you were mentioning. Um, the event really leaned so heavily upon a lot, a lot of talent and. Um, we're just really grateful um, to everyone. But we are also grateful for those folks who um, took a chance on this event four years ago. We, we uh, popped up then and um, we have had uh, teams and volunteers and some sponsors that are, have come uh, been with us every year. Um, so to commemorate that, we, um, we have the MTI four-year coin that we are going to be uh, handing out i'm going to be mailing them to people and uh, the first one actually goes to first tech challenge um uh, ken johnson is said he was going to tune in today so hi ken um because of obviously without first tech challenge and all the wonderful people there uh this would not be possible so thank you um the two teams that have been with us from the beginning um are 8393 the giant dicephalic brain stem and 7244 out of the box, and they are both from Pennsylvania. And we thank them for, for coming every year and, and competing, and they have um, done very well here. Um, we've also are going to be providing the coins to the um, some folks at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory for the STEM program. Uh, Dr. Ralph Semmel, who is the director, Dr. Michael Riskevich, um, who is the head of the space sector, Dr. Jason uh, Calaray, who is the missionary uh, executive for the uh, civil space and Carrie um, Beiser, who has organized it every year. And now our sponsor who has been with us um, 
through the years is Robot Zone, and which some people know as Actobotic, some people know as Go Build It, and they actually do it all. And um, they, from the beginning, have been extremely generous and and provided a lot of wonderful hardware for the teams um, who have uh, competed at the MTI. And then we have our list of volunteers. Now, some of these volunteers have come not like with teams uh, or they came with volu- um, as a volunteer. So if their team didn't make it, they would still show up and support the event. So I wanted to um, recognize them and, and we thank them very much. And that's Jenny Beatty. And the Davy family, they are a powerhouse, huh? Bryce Davy, Cynthia Davy, and Caitlin Davy. Thank you very much. Um, my husband, Andy Dreisman and uh, Caleb Dreisman. And Bill Duncan, who um, who was crazy enough to say yes when we came up with this idea when he was uh, the affiliate partner here in Maryland. Um, more in French, um, Mike Carridge, of course, our wonderful Mike. Um, Jeff Kelbeck, who has been our um, our uh, head ref year after year. And I'm noticing that that name is spelled wrong. I'm sorry, Jeff. It's with an I, K E L B I C K. <laughs> Anika, Seth, and Rose Young, thank you very much. Um, now I'm going to turn it back to uh, to Mike because I know we have teams out there who are just very eager to know how did this all turn out. So off to you, Mike. All right, thank you, Amber, for being able to highlight some of the folks that are helping to make this happen year in and year out. Uh, it is not a small task for any of us to be able to do, but more importantly, we probably should get all over to the real fun part about this, which is our actual uh, awards. So let's start going into that. We first have our Team Choice Award. So our Team Choice Award is actually a new award this year. Uh, we decided that it would be probably a good idea to have it where the teams themselves can choose amongst their peers based on the information that is also being provided by the judges to the team that exemplifies the Maryland Tech Invitational, the one that inspires them the most and the one that they think will be able to carry and help inspire more people within their own community. And with this in mind, Gobildo was gracious enough to also offer a one of their FTC master kits that will allow the team who inspires teams to continue to inspire teams by choosing a team to give that kit to, preferably a rookie team within their area. So they get to play it forward uh, to another team in their area. So with that, we'd like to say that our winner for this award, so congratulations to team number 8393, that's team 8393, the giant dinocephalic brain stems from Baden, Pennsylvania, United States of America. Hello. And, yes. Yeah, we also we have Caleb, who is going to be joining us as our game announcer, helping to fill in some of our details here as we're going through the rest of our award ceremony. So how are you doing, Caleb? Uh, just happy to be here, Mike. Awesome. Just- Going in college, you know, you get a bit of a way away from FTC sometimes. It's good to go back and remember your roots. Yeah, no, definitely. Speaking of our roots, we actually have our Software Innovation and Quality Award, which is actually the one that's up next, uh, which has gone through a couple of different changes over the last couple of seasons here with the MTI, trying to find a great way of recognizing the hard work and dedication that goes into the software side as well as the hardware side to make great robots. Um, So this year it was actually rewritten by a couple of First Tech Challenge alumni to be able to better demonstrate both the innovative application of software into this year's First Tech Challenge game, as well as strong software techniques and building and collaborating together to be able to go forward. So with this, the winner of this award will receive a Go Build a Strafer kit in, in conjunction with their team grant. So let's get on to see what the judges had to say about this award winner. Using precise odometry allowed this team an automatic return system to their stacking position during their tele-operated play, setting up a great process for ensuring their code was excellent and and only having the best code utilized on their machine. When talking with this team, they sure show that they knew their stuff, not only from the implementation of code, but also how to manage that code with their team base. So congratulations is gonna go to team number 8221. 
That's Team 8221 Cubics from Hampstead, Maryland, United States of America. And we'd like to give also a shout out to our runner-up teams that were shown there uh, for their hard work and dedication. All of our teams are going to be receiving uh, feedback from our judges uh, on their on their applications for the number of these awards. But here you can see some of the clips of Cubics in action at one of their qualifying events, zooming around the field with blazing speed. All right, and with that, we're gonna move on to our next award, which we're gonna is the Champions Award. So with the Champions Award, it had a little bit of a change this year. Uh, with Typically our Champions Award is given to the top three teams of the winning alliance. This year, since we couldn't have ourselves a winning alliance in the same traditional sense, we had a virtual skills test. So the top three scoring teams are the ones that are going to be recognized here. Our judges uh, and our, our referees were the ones that were watching these matches while they were happening live to be able to score them and have a record as we were moving forward to make sure that everyone was playing on the same playing field. And so we are going to be recognizing these top three teams. So the first team that we'd like to recognize is our third place team scoring a total of 215 points in their round. So congratulations on your achievement to team number 9889. Team 9889 Cruise Control from Flanders, New Jersey with a score of 215 points. And we've got a bit of a footage here from their match. As you can see, we've got a, a f oh. Congratulations again to Team 9889 for their excellent run and coming home with our third place prize for the Champions Award. Next up, we have one of our hardware awards, the KISS Award. The KISS Award goes to the team that has embraced and demonstrated the KISS, or the Keep It Straightforward and Simple philosophy when designing their robot. This award celebrates the accessibility and reliability of an elegant mechanical design. This award can be given to a team for the overall design of their robot or for a specific component on their machine. The winner of this award will receive a Go Build a Straper kit in addition to their team grant. This is what the judges had to say about this team. Their entire strategy was designed around delivery and speed with thought put into weight reduction and a small size for both speed and maneuverability. The judges were particularly impressed with the elegance and simplicity of the many components used to accomplish this very simple strategy, including the simplicity and elegance that was their intake. This team simplified their entire strategy mid-season with a singular focus to be the best alliance partner and to deliver the stones and do the best they could in the autonomous mode. So congratulations goes to team number 6931. It's team 6931, the substantial monocephalic brainstem from Baden, Pennsylvania, United States of America. And there they are, the little bot in black, moving very, very quickly all over the field. One of the more unique designs that we saw for our judges, being able to have some grabs uh, for the stones on either side of their robot. And just very, very quick little machine. All right, and then with the KISS Award, the next thing that we have up is our second place for our Champions Award. So again, this is about on the field performance. And we've already seen that the bar has been set pretty high with over 200 points. Fun fact, out of all of the skills test scores, we had seven, count them, seven that were over 200 points with one of them coming in so close with 199. 
So if we give them the bump, that's eight. Eight teams. Eight teams with over 200 points scored solo. That is absolutely mind-blowing. So to add themselves into some distinguished company for their on-the-field performance, we have our second-place championship champions award winner, which is going to go congratulations to Team 8393. And that's Team 8393, the giant dinocephalic brain stem robotics team from Baden, Pennsylvania, with a top score of 221 points. And here we can see, again, some samples from their run, just absolutely moving at a lightning pace around the field. Uh, this is one of the things that the brain stems have been known for for a long time, is rapid pace of their robot, and they have not fallen apart this year. They have continued to keep that incredible speed and stack those stones as high as they possibly can. Absolutely incredible. Next up, we have one last hardware award to hand out, which also comes with some physical hardware, and that would be our Hardware Mastery Award. This award goes to the most innovative and robust hardware solution to this year's challenge. The team that receives this award really impressed the judges with their engineering process, their design, and performance on the field. Winner receives a Red Robotics FTC Starter Kit for V3, as well as a team grant. The finalists for this award will also receive Ultra Planetary Gearbox Kits. This is what the judges had to say about this team. The team's final robot had a great and effective design from top to bottom. It was apparent that every part of this robot was intentionally designed. They were able to easily describe their engineering process and share with us the many iterations of not just the whole robot assembly, but of the many individual discrete mechanisms that make up the whole machine. It was clear an iterative process was built into this machine from the build beginning, and in conjunction with this, the final machine made them stand up above an extremely competitive field. So congratulations goes to team number 8393. That's team 8393, the giant dinosphalic brainstem team once again from Baden, Pennsylvania, United States of America. One of the things that was specifically brought out from some of the conversations we had with the judges was the way in which the speed was paired with some of the design for their they had an elevator lift and intake they had claws they had all these individual discrete things that were put into the machine the amount of the full engineering process that was on display through the conversation that they were able to have with the students for the team really says that even if the robot was not as successful as it is they would have taken a lot of what we teach here with FIRST and with the MTI, which is generally the engineering process, that you can, failure is an option, it's one that you should embrace and just continue to steam forward as fast as you possibly can. So congratulations again, going to Team 8393. And now the last award that we have to give, which would be our Champions Award winner. Our Champions Award winners this year from third, second, and even first place, and everyone who competed in the skills test had to go through a lot to get to where we are. Not only did they have to get past the bar of being able to apply to the MTI, but they also had to get past a lot of other issues that were happening within their local area. This team ended up having the highest score at our virtual MTI, which was 227 total points, which is just insane, mind-blowing. Did not think this was going to be possible. Um, so there's a huge congratulations that needs to go to team number 3409. And that is team 3409, the Astromex from Missouri, United States of America, with an absolutely staggering 227 score. It is incredible, honestly. I haven't seen scores this high pretty much in any of my time seeing FTC matches, personally. And here we can see actually a good portion of their run. Uh, we've got a incredible run on the red side for Team 3409. They've been in the autonomous right now, stacking up, ending their autonomous and getting ready to begin their teleoperated period. Uh, we've got 
that these robots are just ready to go. Even though they don't have their alliance partners, that does mean they're gonna have to do all the shuttling themselves. They're gonna have to bring those stones over and start sacking them, but that is not going to slow this team down. No, 3409 can play an efficient solo game. They can move that platform right outside of that parking zone and then keep continuing picking up their stones and beginning to stack them. And as you can see, like some of these other robots, one of the incredible things that they get to do is move incredibly fast around the field, yet still perform efficiently in picking up and stacking those stones. It's possible, of course, that if you move too quickly, you could knock over the tower, but that is not a problem for this team. And that also is something that can come through a lot of driver control, which is something that is gonna come from a lot of experience and a lot of well-built robot design. You can see they're continuing to stack. As the timer ticks down, we're running about 1.15 on the clock. And it is a certainly an exciting sort of set so far. I have um, I've seen a lot of these matches before, but this one is certainly, especially given all these circumstances, an incredible move from 3409, especially continuing to stack those stones up, basically moving like a machine, as is expected to continue to pick up those cubes, pick up those stones, and place them on the platform. And now we have 45 seconds left in the match, which is 15 seconds away from our beginning of the end game, which is going to be some more time to continue stacking those stones, continue moving quickly under their uh, sky bridge, continue raising up that, I believe, slide lift. And it's important to say that these robots have performed in many aspects. They've performed well in the interviews. They've performed well in the game here. I believe this robot has a fully formed steel chassis that they have custom welded, which is incredible. And they are in the end game, but they are continuing to stack those stones. They have plenty of time because they know that they can efficiently move that platform properly and place that capstone without any worries. And as you can see, they are landing that last stone, getting their cap, getting their park, and that is the end of the match. What an incredible performance. You can see some of our lovely refs there as well. Yeah, so each one of these matches were watched live by our referees. They would chime in at the beginning, be able to do our countdown and be able to move forward from there, letting them know when they had 15 seconds, 10 seconds, five seconds left to play. As Caleb mentioned, a lot of this is gonna boil down to some practice and having a simple machine that is able to work in the correct way. When it comes to everything else that is going on in the world right now, we know that practice is something that's sometimes hard to come by. So it is absolutely amazing that our teams were able to come up with multiple of these scores that were over 200 points and getting extremely close to it with many, many others. So congratulations to all of our teams who came out and competed this year. We are extremely excited about the progress that you made this year. It is extremely impressive and inspiring for all of us to continue to do this event as we move forward. And we're hoping next year we'll be seeing you in the Kazakov Center. Anyway, good night, everyone. And we'll see you next time in about a year from now.